It had taken days, but I finally had it. The means to break into gun stores and arm myself. But what good would it be if I died like a dog in the streets? My trip across the infested streets of Louisville almost cost me my life. And I had to do it again. Approaching from the south was off the cards, so I opted to head further north and approach from the west. The journey was tense as I navigated through tight streets and around those blocking the way. Now due west of my base, I cut right and began my approach. Only to find myself surrounded. Barely escaping intact, it was clear it was only getting worse, so I dipped into a side street named for the north, where recent burn-offs would mean a safer journey. It was a tense drive, but under control, as I passed the ruins of Knox Bank and returned home through the poor condition the once clear streets found themselves in. They would follow me home, but I was ready to meet them. Clearing the area of the dead was my best move, but after an intense week of hunting down a sledgehammer, I needed a break. Diving into the internal issues of my base, the lack of water outside drove me into a neighbouring house to wash myself and my clothes. I needed more or better quality barrels. Hoping to reach level 7 carpentry, I consumed VHS tapes into the night. Hi. I'm Alex, and I'm here with my identical twin brother. Today we're making an apocalypse classic. Boiled chicken and rice with avocado. Bam! Looks good, huh? Welcome to Woodcraft. Today we'll be making a survivalist necessity. A bench so you can rest those weary legs. Comfy. Only gaining two levels from all the woodcraft shows, the upgraded barrels were out of reach, so I settled for capping out at level six and building the lower quality ones before heading to bed. With a new day came purpose. I was well past due for guns, a new car, and getting on top of the declining state of the nearby streets. To this end, I collected my allotment of thawed potatoes, grabbed a sledgehammer and a gas can, and departed. Yelling and snaking, I drew in those in the area and kept them close behind. It was a calm but precarious situation as I inched around the block, each yell turning the following dead into a true horde. Weaving them with even more zombies, I approached the Finnegan Research Building. My shout stirred a dormant power from within, and soon the horde reached unfathomable numbers and kept growing. The pressure was mounting, but I kept shouting. My original plan was to burn off the dead at the junkyard but the stream from inside never ceased. Instead, I aimed for the neighboring car park where the joining dead would provide a consistent fuel. From a single flame, I sealed all their fates, holy, forming a large circle of charred flesh and final groans.
dragging into the evening. The gun store was now out of my reach, but I could still get more supplies and a car from the nearby bar. Despite my efforts, they contested my return. But failed to stop it. Safely inside, crafted some molotovs and checked my weight. My vegetables weren't sustaining me, leaving me underweight. Fighting against the lack of calories, I sculled a bottle of wine like a goblin and gave in to inebriation. Out of practice, I performed burpees to stretch for the coming day. This time my focus was the gun store by the gas station, but first, my crops were dying from dehydration. With empty barrels, I resorted to my reserves and gave them just enough for the next few days before departing. Wanting a good conditioned car with a big boot, I left on foot and repeated the steps from yesterday. Except this time, I passed by the gun store before leading them to my burn-off pile by the gas station. Before setting them alight, I drew in those outside a small mall. I triggered another dormant horde. The large concrete area of the car park allowed me to maneuver safely around the new and aflamed dead, but if I left those in the mall alone, They'd bleed into the streets and undo any progress, so I took risks to get closer, letting my yells echo throughout the building at the expense of the grass and fence. Again, again, and again, I drew them out before returning to the car park and setting them aflame. After wiping out what remained, I could now hotwire any of the vehicles in the car park, even with great boot space. The low engine condition made the purple dash bull driver undesirable, but I found the perfect vehicle for my next task nearby. It was time to tackle the gun store. My fire axe made quick work of any zed or doors in my way, whilst the sledgehammer broke through the chain link security gate. After one final scan, I was in. Rather than grabbing everything, I skimmed the shells to good condition shotguns and shells. At my low level aiming, most guns were unusable, and the ability to hit multiple targets at once would significantly increase my ability to master the aiming skill. With my back breaking to the weight, I returned home and contemplated the best way to utilize my newfound ability to inflict death and draw in the dead. Regardless, I would be ready for it. Using the last water in the bathroom, I washed away the blood and grime in preparation for a new day's addition. Shotgun and shells in hand, my screams went unanswered as I journeyed south. I was alone, but not for long. I made quick work of the first group and chipped away at those drawn in. Quantity of dead frayed my nerves and aim, but beta blockers got it under control as I continued to work away at the horde. Spotting a large backpack, I darted back through the group and took my shot to get it. Driven north by the encroaching dead, I would return to grab it once I cleared those following.
Why was a zombie on fire? One of my nearby fires must have spread, or a zombie escaped, and I was paying the price. Soon my horde was aflame, and the nearby houses were at risk from the arid overgrowth. I could quell the flames, not with water, but with gunfire. Missing a shot, I raced between the husks of townhouses and could only watch as another row caught a light. My low accuracy was also problematic, but I continued to improve. Preserving shells, I dispatched what remained with my hand axe and aimed to prevent another fire from spreading. To this end, I yelled to draw out any dead nearby or inside as the gravel path would prevent the flames from jumping from the buildings. The back was clear, so I returned to the front and continued drawing out the dead. Oh shit. Waiting for the flames to die, I hotwired another car. Topped it up with gas, and checked each of the buildings had their fires extinguished. There was one last thing to do. Grabbing the backpack, I returned to the taxi and ditched it in the entranceway. Spent the remainder of my day listening to the radio, transferring everything to my new backpack, and fighting back against my dwindling weight. It was time to do it all again, except this time, I aimed to clear out some of the dead clustered to the south of my base. Whilst checking for helicopters, I managed to catch the end of the emergency broadcast. It was going to rain, but I had more pressing concerns. Stealthily, I fought my way into a barricaded house. These can contain a plethora of supplies or weapons, The axes and food were worth taking, but not life-changing, or enough of a burden to return home, so I pressed on. My shouts and gunfire had a delayed, but intended effect. Within the confines of the parking lot, I gathered what I could and led them up the street. Eventually, I burned through the shells I had brought with me, and I found myself back by the townhouses intending to use a molotov. Except this time, I would prevent the flames from spreading further than I wanted them to. Besides one instance, I succeeded in that promise, with the fire failing to take hold. Wrapping up earlier than expected, I collected another car and ditched it outside once again. The entranceway had deteriorated far beyond when I had first successfully sealed the barricade, and I was tired of accommodating it. I quickly emptied my cerise and step van into a large pile in my living room and moved them out. Rather than ditching them far away, I kept them close by for an improvised choke point and source of parts. My level 6 carpentry was too low for high quality water barrels, but I could construct a gate. But that was for tomorrow. The car's headlights provided the vision I needed to cut down the trees and saplings for logs. Exhausted, carried them behind the barricade and ripped the clothing of those decaying in the entranceway. Before starting proper construction, I needed to read the upcoming carpentry volume for the experience modifier 
so I utilize my necessary brakes. Except this time, I read in the car rather than heading inside. I was stuck and had no idea how to get out. I tried rereading the book, switching seats, began powering through the book before realizing a lone zombie would be the death of me. So I prepared to save and exit. Escape of all things worked. After that near heart attack, I continued working away as if nothing happened. What? With no recent injuries that broke the skin, the queasy modifier was most likely due to my time spent near the rotting corpses. Most likely. So I set about moving the logs, but would read inside in the future. The rain was finally here, and I needed to capitalize on it. Soon my garden was re with a wide array of vegetables. Low calorie, but diverse food supply I could rely on in the future. After reading more and washing myself, I welcomed the next day. With my carpentry book finished, today would be a day of progress. I think you know where this is going. After some indecision on wall placement, I finally settled on aligning it with the original fence. Not a helicopter. But before I could get stuck in, I was interrupted by another helicopter. Even though the entranceway was clear, my work was being undone just out of my view, and I was powerless to stop it. With it gone, and no dead sighted, I harvested the seed-bearing strawberries and returned to work. The next thing on my agenda was a gate. For the materials to build it, I raided my piles of loot and doors for the planks, doorknobs and hinges required. With the remaining log walls following suit, and after readjusting my furniture barricade, the entranceway was finally in a state of strength, rather than on the brink of disarray. Though my cars needed to follow suit. And with some minor touch-ups, I'd finished the exterior of my base. My next step was to wrap up the few remaining ends, like my decreasing weight, limited shells, the awoken dead still pouring out of the mall, and I might as well grab another car. God damn it. With a bandage over the deep wound, I delayed proper medical care to instead grab a plethora of high calorie snacks and to continue hotwiring the step van before returning home. Thankfully, my medical cabinet was well stocked as I removed the lodge glass with tweezers, disinfected it, and sutured it shut. The injury would impact my ability to swing weapons, but not my ability to shoot or throw molotovs. As I drove, I consumed lollies before blasting my horn around the mall. Whatever was in there would now find its way to the outside. The noise left the area by the gas station crawling with the infected. My shouts quickly gave them a target. The outpour through the front doors prevented proper clustering, so I led what I could away and set them alight. Once again, the open mall car park kept the dead from encircling me as I prepared to fight back. One close call from adjoining stragglers cemented the precariousness of the situation, so I clustered them together before continuing to shout and shoot into the afternoon. Now and then, I drew closer to feed the flames with more corpses, my shotgun with targets.
I could continue working on those pulled outside. But I had killed enough. It was well past time for me to secure all the guns and ammo from the gun store. Nothing was left as I stripped displays, lockers, and the back room. All in all, it took me three loads to get everything into the van. Far too much for my already overloaded storage at home. So I grabbed the crates and shelves before leaving. On my return, I continued to eat junk food and noticed my near constant snacking was paying off. For the first time in two months, I was gaining weight. If I kept this up, it wouldn't be long until I lost the underweight trait and regained my strength. With the crates and shells placed upstairs, I signed each a specific weapon type, rifles, pistols, and shotguns, and stored them amongst their corresponding ammo. The attempt to clean my lackluster living quarters spread until multiple facets like literature, skill books, materials, and tools found their way to each other, but I still needed more storage. For this, I raided the nearby shops. Starting at the coffee shop, I looted anything of value before taking the shelves back to the van. For the convenience store, I repeated the same tactic, except this time I came away with two shelves, a large variety of food and drinks, and some cardboard boxes for overflow. With enough storage solutions and at the expense of my ceramics, every item would find its place. As I worked into the night and the morning of the following day, questions started to plague me. What else could I do to secure my position? My ventures into the CBD had made one thing clear. So long as it stood and remained open to my base, it would never be safe. Like an infected wound threatening to take the whole body down with it. Maybe my best course was to cut it away.